Hi, this is Governor John Carney. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, virtual question and answer period. Uh, we've taken a number of questions online from uh, and in emails from state employees, and we'd like to try to answer as many of your, your questions in, in the time we have with you today uh, as we possibly can. I must say we got a lot of really good questions, many of them without really specific answers. Uh, let me just give you a general idea of the situation that we're in. I'm sure you've been following it online and uh, through the newspapers and the media and on television. But in Delaware, just over three weeks ago, we had our first positive uh, case uh, of uh, COVID-19 virus. Here in Delaware, we have issued a number of uh, state of emergency declarations. We've amended those declarations as uh, was necessary to close our beaches, to close bars and restaurants, to close non-essential businesses, to ask uh, uh, people across our state who aren't working in a non-essential business or leaving their home to go to the grocery store or some other essential function to stay at home, to shelter in place, to observe appropriate hygiene and to keep uh, an appropriate six foot at least distance uh, between and among you and your neighbors and, and those that you come in contact with when you're uh, out in the public. This is an extraordinary time, one that we've never experienced before in our lifetime. The last time we had a pandemic like this was back in uh, 1918 and thousands of uh, people were affected and, and died here in Delaware and across the country and this is a uh, a pandemic, a virus pandemic that we've not seen in, in our lifetime. And so we've taken each day as it comes and reacted to the situation on the ground here in Delaware. We have uh, endeavored to keep uh, state government open as an essential business. And there are so many things that state employees do that are very important for the operation of our state and our communities whether it's unemployment, whether it's social services, whether it's correctional facilities, uh, juvenile detention centers, whether it's remote uh, instruction and education for our, for our school students, so many things, whether it's law enforcement and first responder personnel, so many things that uh, state uh, workers do is, are essential uh, to the operations of our state. And so we've got a lot of questions about the specifics uh, of human resources, practices and leave policies and sick leave policies. Again, with each declaration, we've taken those kind of one at a time and adapted them to this particular situation. And so if you, we're not gonna be able to answer all those specifics on this uh, virtual question and answer, but you should consult your first line supervisor your HR uh, representative uh, for, those, uh, uh, for those specific answers, and we can get back to you uh, and answer those specific questions as well. I have a number of questions that have been submitted, and I'd like to try to go through those and answer as many as I can in a general sense, and then be specific about some of my answers as well. So thank you all for joining us, and we'll go through some of these, uh, some of these questions and I'll answer them the best I can. Do you anticipate closing more businesses or more offices? Since we initiated the first uh, state of emergency declaration uh, three weeks ago, we have closed down most non-essential businesses in our state, all non-essential businesses in our state, and we are on a day-to-day -day basis uh, watching the essential businesses that have been allowed to, to uh, stay open to make sure that they're observing appropriate and safe hygiene practices. Uh, and most importantly, what's uh, referred to as social distancing. So making sure that uh, workers and uh, people who come to those businesses uh, to their customers uh, are appropriately six feet uh, apart from one another. So not lining up at cash registers shoulder to shoulder. That's something that I see in some of the grocery stores that uh, are an essential business and are operating in the big box stores. Similarly, we see some of that uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, contact, which uh, we've just put out an order uh, yesterday to, uh, to give guidance to those establishments about how to conduct themselves 
safely. So it is possible that we could end up closing down some of these businesses that aren't operating in a safe and sound way and following the guidance uh, that we have uh, made available. And that includes uh, such places as liquor stores. You probably know we have uh, kept liquor stores open mainly because unfortunately there are a number of folks that are, have alcohol dependency and we don't want them to go through withdrawal symptoms and then end up in the emergency room in our hospitals. And so we're looking at those very closely. Uh, the objective of all of this, again, is to protect and preserve that hospital capacity as we get a surge in new infections and new patients so that we can provide critical life-saving uh, treatment for, for, for those uh, patients. Next question is, what kind of resources are you getting and requesting from the go government? If you think of our overall objective, again, it's to preserve and protect the hospital resources. And part of that involves testing and testing kits. And so in my phone conversation this morning, conference call with the hospitals, we determined that each of the hospitals have enough testing kits to last the next week or, or two. And so that's an adequate supply, and uh, they are anticipate being able to, to uh, get additional supplies after that period of time. So that's, those are some, uh, uh, those are kits that, that we need to continue to have to, to stand up our testing sites. In order to do the testing and to provide services in the hospital, our first responders and our healthcare workers, uh, those that are are uh, operating the testing sites need what's called PPE, protective personal equipment. And those are masks, those are the gowns, those are the gloves, those are the shields uh, to protect uh, those uh, frontline health care providers. And so we do have, again, each of the hospitals and providers on the call today indicated that they had adequate supply uh, at this time. And it's something that we review uh, every day or every other day. These are the kinds of things, and we've asked for, for replenishment uh, of these, uh, this equipment uh, from the federal stockpile. Uh, to date, we've not got a lot of that equipment, mostly because uh, we have some on hand and it's being directed to states uh, with greater need. We were fortunate uh, to have Democrats and Republicans come together in the House and the Senate and pass a $2 trillion a stimulus bill, which will really help uh, small business owners in our state, will really help uh, the thousands of people that have been unemployed uh, or put out of work as a result of the closings that have happened here in Delaware and across the country uh, that will help uh, state uh, and local governments with resources uh, that have been used to respond uh, to this pandemic. Uh, so. Uh, that's essential. There are really essential things that we're, we're asking for, and, and particularly the, the legislation that passed uh, from the federal government. The next question is, we've gotten a lot of questions about what this means for state offices and, and buildings, and, and why are some offices and buildings uh, state open, say, still open? And the reason is that we do have a, a state of emergency declaration but it's not a declaration like a normal weather declaration, uh, a winter or summer storm dec declaration where we uh, close roads and tell uh, people to stay off the roads in our, in our state. Uh, this is a different kind of an emergency, a public health pandemic situation here, which would, uh, uh, could require businesses and individuals to be sheltered for an extended period of time. And so because state government uh, is an essential business, it is not closed, it is open. People are going to work or working remotely. Probably more than 50% of state employees are working remotely from home. Of course, our schools are closed and uh, teachers and school personnel have been standing up uh, online and remote instructional practices, and we've encouraged them to do that so that our children don't lose uh, these months of their education because it's something that they'll nev never get back. And while the schools will be closed again now for another two months, uh, we expect that instruction will be going 
online to as many students as possible. We do have uh, Department of Human Resource guidance with respect to policies in each of the agencies and statewide. In terms of leave policy, we've given state employees additional sick leave and, and leave as a result of the corona, uh, coronavirus uh, situation here. But uh, you should consult with the Department of Human Resources and their uh, frequently asked questions, as well as your uh, HR people in your agencies and department. Talk to your supervisor as well. So the next question is, will the state require mandatory testing for high-risk employees and first responders? Well, first of all, if, if anybody in any category who's going to work and not uh, staying at home and sheltering in place, if they feel sick, if they have flu-like symptoms, if they have a fever uh, or not the onset of a cough or a respiratory uh, tightness, then they should just stay home and they should I isolate them themselves at home. If they get to the point where they believe that they, ha they have those services and they can consult their family care physician, uh, their, uh, their doctor, they can get a referral uh, to be tested at one of the seven test sites in uh, Newcastle Kent, and Sussex counties. Uh, so if you need details about testing, you can consult the website at de.gov slash coronavirus. That's de.gov slash coronavirus. And you can get additional information on all these questions at that website. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a statewide testing program that's being implemented uh, in partnership with the hospitals across our state, with Christiana Care primarily here in Newcastle County, uh, uh, with St. Francis and AI Depot Nemours as well, with Bay Health in Kent uh, and Sussex County, and with BB and Nanticoke and Sus uh, Sussex County as well. Again, it requires a referral from your family care physician or the the hotlines that they have set up. Uh, and the reason for that is that we only have so many tests and uh, the tests aren't as effective if you're not symptomatic, I'm told, by the physicians. And so that's uh, one of the reasons that we don't have broader testing that some people have, have talked about and recommended is important. So we won't have required mandatory testing to the specific question here. For high-risk employees and first responders, we do have tests available for our first responders if they have flu-like symptoms and if they're directed to uh, to be uh, tested, we will uh, put them through the testing process that has the quickest turnaround so they can get uh, back to work as quickly as possible and not be on the shelf for too long a period of time. So uh, the next question is, workers have concerns because school, schools are closed. How can we help uh, children with virtual schooling when we, when we have to go to work? Well, first, uh, thank you to all the teachers and uh, school district personnel across our state. We've worked very closely with them over the last several weeks uh, leading up initially to the, the order to close the schools, mostly to help the schools plan and prepare for providing the school breakfasts and lunches that they provide to thousands of children on a daily basis. And they really have a, done a nice job in responding there, really standing up their summer feeding programs. Uh, to more recently, uh, working on uh, online instruction uh, materials, and a lot of schools and school districts are really working on that. I've been walking uh, up at uh, Mount Pleasant High School, and I noticed that Brandywine School District is handing out uh, laptop uh, computers for children and families that need it so that they can get, uh, participate in that online instruction. And for the little little children, you know, make sure that they're doing uh, their reading, getting the reading in, and getting access to uh, those reading materials. I would recommend that you contact your districts there. Everyone is doing uh, uh, something a little bit different. We will be getting some reporting on that. Uh, in the days ahead. But thank you to all the teachers and educators are working there. And it's also important to point out that we've had a number of school nurses uh, who have volunteered to help with uh, hospital services, and we're going to need healthcare professionals there as, uh, as the number of cases and, and the number of people who are sick with the virus ramps up. 
and hospitalization resources are stretched. And so if there's anyone else out there that has uh, nursing credentials or have credentials that, that we can uh, reestablish, uh, please contact uh, the Division of Public Health uh, to make your name available to them because we're in need of healthcare workers. When we think about the limiting factors there for these testing sites and for hospital resources, ultimately it's going to be the workers, the nurses, uh, and the staffing at the individual hospitals and at the alternative care sites that we're uh, planning on standing up if uh, we get a surge that that uh, occupies all the available beds in in our in our hospitals, and we're planning for that to potential over the next month. So the next question is uh, is kind of a hits a sad subject for me uh, because it relates to sports activities which have been closed down. What is the plan for a spring season of sports for Delaware high schools? And I hope that uh, we we have an opportunity to have some limited. Uh, school sports seasons. It remains to be seen what that will be and what that will look like. But I, I, I hear and I see where uh, some of the athletic associations are looking for ways to have a shortened season or some kind of playoff experience. It would be just a shame for so many of those student athletes if they weren't able to complete their senior senior seniors uh, seasons in particular but all athletes are not uh, having an opportunity to compete uh, this spring. It was very disappointing that, that our, our winter sports season and basketball uh, season in particular, one of great interest to me, uh, was uh, shut down before our, our playoffs were, were completed. So that's something, uh, our sports seasons, it's something that's being looked at and hopefully we'll be able to do something there. But I'm, I must say I'm not overly optimistic, unfortunately. Uh, we get a lot, we've gotten a lot of questions about, as I said uh, at the top, about uh, technical questions about personal leave, sick leave, hazardous pay, uh, and, uh, and cleaning of buildings. buildings. And uh, it really would be impossible to answer all the specifics there. Many of those issues are uh, issues that we've dealt with uh, statewide through the Department of Health and Re- uh, the Department of Human Resources uh, in terms of uh, a sick leave and an additional uh, time. Uh, but one of the things that again that I want to make clear is that the emergency declaration does not mean that the state and state buildings are closed. Uh, it means that uh, we are operating as an essential business. We're open for business, certainly in a scaled-backed kind of way. Obviously, there are a number of state employees who uh, work in some of our uh, facilities, uh, correctional facilities, our juvenile detention facilities, who do have to go to work every day. Uh, they can't work remotely uh, from home, uh, and we understand and are are considering different uh, things that are necessary to keep those workplaces safe uh, and clean. If you have questions, uh, specific questions about your particular agency or department, I would ask you to talk to your supervisor to refer to the guidelines uh, on the Department of Human Resources uh, to consult de.gov slash coronavirus for, for any questions. There's a lot of information that you can get there. Uh, with respect to state government policy, uh, some of the uh, executive orders that we've had. Uh, You can check on the Office of the Governor's website and Facebook page about those uh, particular orders. But uh, I would also ask all state employees to be mindful that uh, your actions and the actions of, of your neighbors affect all of us. And the reason, the way that we're gonna get through all this uh, with as limiting uh, 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 effect on people's health and welfare, welfare, and to save lives is for everybody to abide by the guidance that we hear from the CDC and the scientists out there, which is to practice appropriate hygiene, clean, washing and cleaning our hands, sanitizing our hands, sanitizing uh, sub, uh, uh, substances like this, surfaces that you're touching a lot, this desk in front of me, 
your phones, uh, your doorknobs, uh, if you're getting in and out of the car on your way to uh, this, an, an essential business, uh, your supermarket to get food or a doctor's visit, to really stay in touch with your elderly uh, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and friends, look after your senior uh, uh, neighbors who, who need uh, certain things and, and make sure that they are staying uh, sheltered in place and if you can help in any way, in a safe way, to provide uh, needed uh, resources that they might have, that's really, really important. This is a, a situation unprecedented in our lifetimes. The last time we had a pandemic like this was in 1918, a flu pandemic which uh, ravaged our state and our nation. Uh, and this is a, a pandemic, a viral pandemic that is uh, ravaging our country and our state at the same time. We're gonna get through it, but we need everybody's cooperation and we need the continued uh, support and work of the dedicated uh, state employees. And finally, I just want to thank all those uh, frontline state employees who have continued to provide service in a very difficult environment to our first responders, to our law enforcement officers, uh, to those in, uh, in our correctional facilities and juvenile det detention centers, to all the, the people in the Division of Public Health and Health and Social Services. It really is a, a full and, and head-on uh, team effort uh, to our employees in our division of small business who've just done an incredible job uh, with their, their interactions with businesses across our state, to the Department of Labor in processing thousands of claims, uh, unemployment claims. It's just incredible the way state employees have really stepped up to the plate to continue to deliver service and to protect our, our neighbors uh, across the state of Delaware. Thank you for your continued work on behalf of all of us and be safe.